Put your hands in the air and turn around slowly. Don't try anything funny. It might be dark in here, but I don't miss. Turn around. There you go. Now, I'm sure you didn't realize that this house was occupied, which would explain why you're going through my stuff. So, let's pretend you did this the right way and knocked on my door. Knock, knock. Hi there. You don't look like undead. Can I help you with something? You're looking for medical supplies. Okay, a reasonable request. Set your weapons there and we'll talk. Yeah, backpack too. Thank you. Now, hang on a sec. Let me light a few candles. Okay. Now, introductions. I'm Blythe, and you are bleeding all over my floor. You didn't think to lead with I'm badly injured? You picked I'm looking for medical supplies? Jesus Christ. Okay, just sit down on the couch here. Look, I know it's old, but it's clean, I promise. Just sit. Yep, yeah, there you go. I hate to do this right now, but I need to make sure you're not bitten first. Yeah, I can help you with your jacket. Okay, show me. Arms look good. Neck. Or so... good. No, no need. I know your legs are fine. You weren't moving like you had any leg injuries, and there's no rips, tears, or blood stains on those jeans. Well, except at the waistband, thanks to that wound on your side, which has been bleeding way too much to be a bite. Yikes. Hmm? Yeah, I have some supplies. I can try to patch you up. It's not going to be pretty, but I've got enough first aid skills to keep you alive, I think. Here, just lay down. I need to grab some things. I interrupted you before you told me your name. What is it? Nice to meet you. Okay, I think I've got what I need. This warrants using up some battery on my headlamp, though. Perfect. Okay, I need you to take your hand away from your side. I know it hurts, but I have to see what I'm working with here. I'm gonna take your hand and gently pull it away, okay? Easy. Deep breaths. There you go. Okay, I'm going to peel away your shirt, all right? I know, I know, I'm sorry. God, how did this happen? Running from undead. Got caught on some jagged metal while jumping the hood of a wrecked car. Jesus. I don't suppose you had a recent tetanus booster before the world went to shit. <laughs> well, that's lucky. Between that and some duct tape, you might just make it. <laughs> I'm kidding. No duct tape today. You're getting stitches. I mean, I have used duct tape to seal a wound before, but that was on myself. I'd never do that to someone else unless it was a last resort. How long ago did you get injured? A couple hours? Well, in my amateur opinion, it looks okay. It looks like the bleeding is kind of tapered off on its own, and I can't see your guts, so it probably looks and feels worse than it is. Just sliced along your bottom rib pretty bad. 
Okay, I can't delay the inevitable any longer. It's time to clean this up. Bite down on your jacket if you need to. Here goes. Deep breath. Shh, it's all right. It's all right, I've got you. I know, but hey, the worst is over. You must have kept pretty good pressure on this. I'm sorry, you walked how far? You must have been hauling ass, and with an injury too. God, remind me not to cross you. Okay, this looks clean. Time for stitches, I think. I know it still hurts, but try to relax a bit. You can look away if it makes you uncomfortable. Why am I helping you? Because you needed help? And you weren't trying to hurt me, so... Yeah, I know. Most people would have shot on sight. But... Damn it, there's few enough of us healthy ones out here without us trying to kill each other. In the last few years, I've lost more friends and family to petty squabbles and misunderstandings than to the undead. Fear is more contagious than the virus. I'm trying my best not to buy into it. Don't get me wrong, if you betray this trust, I won't hesitate to put you down. I'm not stupid. But it would be asinine to not give you a chance to prove what kind of person you are. Yeah, I am alone. I have lost everyone else. You? Two of a kind. I'm sorry for your losses. Thank you. Stitch is done. What about my name? Oh, I guess Blythe is pretty uncommon. <laughs> well, my mom was obsessed with Anne of Green Gables. I was supposed to be a boy, so she was going to name me Gilbert, after Gilbert Blythe. When the doc told her I was a girl, she gave me his last name instead. Between the two of us, I think I got the better option. <laughs> okay, I'm going to press this bandage on. Hang in there a sec. Deep breath. Sorry. All right, you're good. Help you sit up. You sure you don't want to rest there for a while longer? Okay, sure. Take my hand. better? Good. Um, are you hungry? I made some vegetable soup yesterday. I'd be happy to share. Sure, I'll go heat it up. So, uh, where are you headed? Salem, huh? Yeah, I was headed there too, actually, with my brother. We'd heard about the community over there and how they were starting to rebuild, but um, I stopped for the winter. It was getting too cold at night to be sleeping outside, and when my brother got shot in a squabble over ammo, I didn't have anyone to trade off watch with. I found this place, settled in to collect myself, and discovered that they had a full root cellar, completely tucked away behind a false cabinet in the basement. Oh, these people were doomsday preppers. <laughs> they had everything. Food, medical supplies, ammunition, outdoor gear. It's too bad they were on a trip to the Bahamas when all hell broke loose. <laughs> yeah, check out their itinerary on the desk. I leave it there to remind myself that even the best laid plans can be futile. 
Anyway, the nights should be getting above freezing soon. I figured I'd head out in a few weeks and see if I can make it on my own. Are you, uh... Nothing, never mind. I was just wondering if you wanted a travel companion. I mean, you have to heal for a while before you travel, and you look like you were exhausted even before the injury. I have more than enough supplies here to share. We could even repair some of your clothes and gear if you need it. And we're headed to the same place. It makes sense to team up. Am I always so quick to trust people? No, not really. <laughs> but you've had a few opportunities to kill me already if you were going to. And you look like you would be a good person to have watching my back. How do I know? Well, that's the funny thing about the end of the world. The dumbasses get picked off pretty easily. Anyone who's left over after two years of hell must be pretty clever and resourceful. All that's left is to determine what kind of morals they have. Here's your soup. Really? You want to team up? Yeah, yeah, that would be awesome. Yes, I am happy. I haven't spoken to another human being in three months. The fact that the first one I interact with is not trying to kill me is great, but them agreeing to buddy up is the most exciting thing that's happened to me since... Well, you know. Just let me be giddy, okay? <laughs> Yeah, you're right. We should compare notes, plan out our route. But for now, enjoy your soup. We can start planning tomorrow once you've gotten some sleep. After all, we're in a safe place with nothing but time. Alright, I'm gonna go rustle up some blankets for you, so you can rest for a while. And hey, for what it's worth, I'm glad we stumbled into each other. I brought up the 85-liter packs from the basement. Yeah, I figured we'd replace our old ones with these. Mine had a couple of tears anyway, so... What? Oh yeah, they still have the tags on them. Ooh, these were pricey. At least we know they'll be comfortable to carry around. Do you want blue or green? <laughs> okay, here you go. All right, let's mark off the list as we pack. Sleeping bag, bottom of the pack. Yeah, nifty access zipper at the bottom so we don't have to unpack the whole bag each night. It looks like these are rated for 20 degrees Fahrenheit, so we should be okay, especially now that it's staying above freezing at night. Uh, sleeping pad. Small comfort, that might help us keep warmer. Tent. I'll set over here. Strap it to the top of my pack before we leave, and you've got the tarp, right? Okay. Let's see. You've got the first aid kit. Check. All-in-one eating utensils. Check. Collapsible bowls and insulated mugs. Check. Oh, the cooking pot. Thank you check. Water filtration straws and purification tablets as a backup, check. Matches and lighters, check. Headlamps, check. My hunting knife, check. But that's going on my person. And you've got your pocket knife and multi-tool, check. <laughs> Oh, it's just... Before all this happened, I never would have been able to afford all of this gear firsthand. And now, going through these people's basement, it's like a shopping spree at a sporting goods store. <laughs> Take this, for example. 
insulated down jacket. Retails at $450, and we get it for free. <laughs> Wool beanie, 35 bucks. I could never imagine spending that much on a beanie in real life. What have you got there? Wool base layers. A hundred bucks for the shirt alone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that's a good call, actually. I'm gonna double check what I have. You know, I'm gonna wear one set and pack another. They roll up really small. Yeah, I'm gonna wear the cargo pants over the base layer and then pack the lighter pair of pants for later. How many shirts? Uh, total four long sleeve, four short, one light rainproof jacket, which I'm going to wear as another layer under the down coat, and a couple tank tops. How many pairs of underwear and wool socks do you have? Okay, good, me too. Enough to keep us fresh for a week. <laughs> yeah, should be fine. I grabbed that little laundry detergent bar, and that paracord you have can be used as a laundry line. All we really need is a water source and a sunny day, and we can wash our clothes. Your idea to break in the hiking boots around the house was genius. I think you saved us both some blisters. <laughs> yeah, they fit really well now. Thanks for asking. How about yours? Good. Um... Toiletries. We each have some soap, a shampoo bar. Did you want a razor? Okay. Toothpaste and toothbrush, because if there's one creature comfort I'm damn well gonna have at the end of the world, it's clean teeth. <laughs> oh yeah, take one of these. Microfiber towel. That way we can still bathe and dry off quickly. No struggling to pack a bulky towel, and no freezing our asses off trying to air dry. <laughs> uh, toilet paper in a Ziploc bag. Good idea. And you've got the trowel? Cool. I'm grabbing a lip balm, too. Sure, have one. A water bottle. Gonna strap that to the side of the pack. Oh, carabiners. Good point. Yeah, we can each take a few. Clip them to our packs. Okay, now the bear canisters. I mean, would you rather I call them the food vaults? Yeah, actually, that does sound more badass. <laughs> Alright, let's inventory our food vaults. Um, bullion powder, that's in mine. Dehydrated vegetables, yep. Dried potato flakes. Yeah, you've got a lot of that. Never thought I'd say this, but I'm gonna be sick of mashed potatoes by the time we get to Salem. <laughs> Ramen, check. Dried fruit. Mm-hmm, I've got that. Jerky. Okay, that's in yours. And... Homemade oatmeal energy bites. It's not a ton of food, but we'll hunt and fish too. Just supplement our meals with this stuff. It shouldn't take us more than two to three weeks to get there. Ideally, anyway. Speaking of fishing, did you find some stuff we could use? Yeah, that'll work. Hooks, lures, a good bit of fishing line. Seriously? You found a collapsible fishing rod down there? Awesome. No, please, make room for it. Here, um, I'll take the compass and knife sharpener and that little jar of salt to give you more room in your pack for it. Does that fit better? Great. And you've packed your weapons and ammo of choice? Nice. We'll use it as sparingly as we can, but it will be good to have. I need to clean my gun before we go. What do you mean it's done? You cleaned it for me while I was getting firewood this morning? That's really thoughtful of you. Thank you. 
really, it means a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've got the map. You want to go over the route again? Okay. Well, it's just over 300 miles to get to the community outside of Salem. I'm assuming we'll put in 15 miles a day, minimum, but that leaves us some time to hunt and rest up each day if we need it. The first two-thirds of the trip is going to be high desert, pretty open, but we'll find little valleys to hunker down in at night, and there's plenty of game to be had out there. Best of all, it's sparsely populated. We aren't likely to run into too many undead on the way. My biggest concern, honestly, is that the survivors on that stretch are going to fiercely defend their property. I doubt they'd even let us camp on their lawn, and if they did, I don't know that I'd trust them not to kill us in our sleep. We'll have to be very careful if we go to barter for goods, or need shelter for some unexpected reason. Once we get here, to the mountains, we'll have trees all around, so we'll have an easier time staying off the radar. Once we get over the mountains, we'll start running into more undead. They will be spilling out from places like Portland and the Salem suburbs, so we'll need to keep a sharp eye. Why are we headed into the thick of the undead? Well, technically we're not going to Salem itself. We're going to a town northeast of it, called Silverton. Really quaint little place. I've been there before, pre-zombies. It was really nice. They have a reservoir, farmland all around, easy access to the mountains, and a decent medical center. Are the rumors true? You mean, the ones about them developing prevention there? I don't know. I hope so. What I do know is, as of last fall, they had a functioning community that welcomed outsiders and vetted them appropriately. As long as you're not an asshole, working for the greater good, and willing to bust your ass to contribute, they'll welcome you. Which sounds pretty fair to me. How do I plan to contribute? You mean, aside from my piecemeal first aid skills? <laughs> Before all of this went down, I was studying sustainable energy. It was a semester short of getting my degree, so... I don't have a lot of practical experience, but I'm hoping the combination of my knowledge and my willingness to work will get me somewhere. What about you? What do you hope to bring to the table? Yeah? That would be awesome. You could help a lot of people with that. Yeah, I really do think so. <laughs> so, um, I think that's everything. We'll leave at first light tomorrow morning. Nothing, it's just... The odds are stacked against us. I know we can't stay here. We'd run out of the stockpiled food within a couple of years, and there's really no good way to make this property permanently defensible. Plus, we don't have any seeds or anything to start a garden plot with, but this trip will be risky. There's a good chance that something will happen to one or both of us along the way. I hope it doesn't, though. You're a really good friend. I'd hate for something to happen to you. We'll look out for each other. Yeah, you're right. That's all we can do, really. So, any thoughts on how you'd like to spend your last night in relative comfort? <laughs> yeah, I do actually have a couple ideas. We have some gasoline left for the generator. Enough to power the TV and Xbox for five or six hours. And there's popcorn, and we may as well use it. How would you feel about a proper movie night? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> Gosh, this is going to be great. What movies are we going to watch? Well, these folks only had everything on a streaming service, so that doesn't help us, but you remember that UPS truck I told you about? Right, the one I found a couple weeks ago. When I was looking for useful items, I might have snagged us copies of The Mummy and The Mummy Returns on Blu-ray. Did you actually just... Look, we don't talk about the Tom Cruise Mummy movie. Just don't go there. Have a little class. 
<laughs> Good. Sounds fun to me, too. These used to be among my favorite movies back in the day. A movie about two insanely gorgeous people saving the world from undead? Can't possibly find anything appealing about that. <laughs> awesome. Well, want to fire up the generator? Great. I'll get started on the popcorn. If this might be our last night under a proper roof, we're going to spend it the right way. Okay, your turn. What's something else you miss? Pizza. Okay. What was your favorite pizza? <laughs> All right, I'll allow it. <laughs> right, my turn. Hmm. Hot showers. Ugh, I would kill to have a hot shower with real shampoo. Of course with music. I used to have a waterproof speaker so I could listen to something energizing in the morning or relaxing in the evening, or something edgy if I felt like brooding in the shower, as you do. <laughs> Your turn. Airplane travel. Oh gosh, that's a really good one. I've spent months trying to get halfway across the country. Being able to close that gap in a few hours seems like a distant dream. <laughs> I swear I'd never complain about a middle seat or the TSA line again if I could have that back. Um, my next one is gonna be... My inhaler. <laughs> I ran out of doses only a few months in, so if I get an asthma attack now, I just have to sit around with my arms above my head and hope it stops on its own. Can't tell you how many nights I've lain awake, unable to sleep for how hard it is to breathe. Next. Fresh fruit. God, yeah. Just being able to get an orange from the store without a second thought? Pure luxury. <laughs> and things like kiwi and pineapple. Oh, yum. I think the last time I had fresh fruit was last summer. We saw this little town entirely deserted, except for the undead. We weren't going to actually go through it. It wasn't worth it to fight off zombies, but then we saw this one house that had an apricot tree just loaded down with fruit. We hadn't eaten in a few days at that point, and we were getting pretty weak. And Oliver, my brother, Ollie, thought it would be worth it to trade a few bullets so we could get some of that fruit. So we knocked out some undead, took an old towel off a laundry line, and filled it up with as many apricots as we could carry before getting the hell out of there. I don't think I've ever eaten anything that tasted as good as those apricots did. We ate nothing but apricots for a couple of days, and then when they started to go soft, Ollie stewed them down. Later the same day, we traded that for some oatmeal and powdered eggs. What about you? What's a random thing that you never thought could taste so good until the apocalypse? Really? What's the story behind that one? Oh wow, you must have been starving. Yeah, I can see how that might have seemed delicious. <laughs> okay... Mm, here's another one. What was your guilty pleasure back in the day? Oh come on, you suggested this question game. Now answer the question. Was it pop music? Documentaries? Long walks on the beach. <laughs> hey, that's awesome. No, I'm not making fun. I genuinely think that's cool. Everyone's gotta have their thing. Me? Um... I loved watching figure skating competitions. I couldn't skate at all myself, but watching those free skate routines was just so cool. <laughs> and listening to old country music. Don't make that face, I hated modern country. When I say old, I mean old. 
country music. Like the stuff you'd find in old Western movies. The ones with John Wayne and Gene Autry. Do I remember the songs still? Sure. Oh no, I'm not singing. No. Do you want me to attract every zombie for a mile around with my wailing? <laughs> oh, looks like we get to be a bit damp tonight. And it's going to be getting dark soon. We should probably find a place to camp. What do you think? Find a little valley and settle in? Over that ridge? Yeah, okay. Let's head that way. Hey, look. Yeah, looks like just the one farm down there. We've been passing family farms like it all day. Get down. Look. Yeah, three undead in the yard. You don't think we'll find any live ones in there? Me either. I'm not seeing any signs of life. There might be some supplies in there, though. And it's an old farmhouse with a chimney. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd love to spend the night not just dry, but cozy in front of a roaring fireplace. This rain is soaking me to the skin. Okay, what's the plan? The truck? Oh yeah, that is a crowbar in the truck bed. Okay, so we move in together from here. You try to take them down with as few bullets as possible. Then we move in towards the house. I'll grab that crowbar and use it to double check our work as we walk that way. By then, any others on the property should already be coming at us. Then you use the gun again and... Rinse and repeat. Ready? Let's do it. Good luck. I'm fine. Keep shooting. Where'd the other one go? I think it's behind the barn. I'm right behind you, though. Watch out for... splashing. Ugh. There it is, to the right. Look out! Coming from the house! Whew. Ugh. That was close. This one came flying out of the house. Don't know that I've ever seen one move that quickly. Yeah, I'm fine. Just took me by surprise, that's all. You good? Okay, let's head into the house, do a sweep, grab what supplies we can find, and barricade ourselves into the living room for the night. It's getting pretty dark. You're shivering. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm cold too. The fire's going strong though. We should be warm soon. Here, come sit next to me. It never gets easier, does it? In the moment, sure, you take care of yourself and do what you have to to clear out undead. But then later you wonder. You think about what their names might have been. What did they do for a living? Were they a morning person or a night owl? Did they like pineapple on pizza? Did they have the best Halloween costume every year? Or maybe they made the best desserts for the annual potluck? Did they have kids? Did they visit their grandma every weekend? Were they a gamer, a writer, or a YouTuber, or were they the person that knew a thousand facts about some obscure interest they had? The thought of all the life wasted, it can send you spiraling. 
Yeah, I'm okay. I just can't help thinking about it, is all. I'm sorry if I'm not very good company. You're thinking about it, too? Hmm. Are you wanting to sit in your feels, or do you want a distraction? Loop back. Loop back to what? Oh, the country songs. <laughs> you still want me to sing for you, huh? I suppose you're right. No one will hear me but you. But you can't judge. I'll try my best, but if it's bad, just remember you asked for it. Okay. You told me long ago that we would never part. But how was I to know? I never, never shared your heart. My darling, tell me true. Have you found someone new? Our love was so divine. Don't break this aching heart of mine. Deceive me if you may. Don't tell me that we're through. I've nothing left to say. Except I'll go on loving you. My darling, tell me true. Have you found someone new? Our love was so divine. Don't break this aching heart of mine. I warned you it might be bad. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked it. Either way, it put a smile on your face, so it was worth it. <sighs> oh, I'm exhausted. Yeah, I am a little warmer, thanks. Do you mind if I rest my head on your shoulder just for a little while? Thank you. Hope you sleep well. You all right? Yeah, you just look dead tired, that's all. Oh, thanks. <laughs> the last time I felt rested, uh, 2014, maybe? <laughs> Did you get enough to eat? Yeah, I did. Thanks. I'm glad you got that pheasant earlier. It was a nice change from fish and ramen. What do you say we rest up a little tomorrow? We've been making great time, and we'll reach the mountains in another day or so. The going will be a lot slower and a lot harder once we're there, so... It might be worth it to take a breather, hunt a little, wash our clothes and ourselves in the river, get some extra sleep. And besides, our little slice of heaven here is pretty defensible. Not like undead could make the climb like we did. And anyone, or anything, coming from the other side would have to get through all that brush and make a lot of noise doing so. Or they'd have to cross the river so we'd hear the splashing. We've been going nonstop for a week and a half. I think it would do us some good. Then it's settled. <sighs> you know, once you take the whole survival aspect away, this almost feels like a normal camping trip. <laughs> oh yeah, I loved camping. 
I'd go all the time as a kid with my family, and when I got older, my brother and I would go over the weekends at a park near our house. Even when he'd go with his friends, he'd still let me tag along. I have many fond memories of spooky campfire stories and shitty camp food and the occasional mishap with a creature. <laughs> oh, I definitely have stories. Okay, um, this one time my brother brought his college buddy along with him. It was my senior year of high school, and we were headed out to this campground that was usually pretty empty that time of year. Not a lot of people camping yet on spring break. We picked a spot, rustled up some dinner, and then tidied up the campsite for the night. Now my brother's friend decided to put the food he brought into his tent. I saw him doing that and said, hey, you know, you should put your food up into the trees like we're doing. I even offered him one of our canisters and space in our pack to put snacks in, but he didn't want it. He just kind of scoffed at me. <laughs> and my brother backed me up, but the guy was still not interested in listening. So Ollie and I secured our own food and our backpacks up into a tree and crawled into our tent for the night. At some point in the middle of the night, we woke up to the loudest scream I have ever heard before or since. <laughs> No, it wasn't anything serious, just the world's fattest raccoon. <laughs> it had smelled his food, chewed a hole into his tent, and helped itself to all the snacks in that tent, and then crawled up onto the guy in search for more. When he started screaming, the poor thing freaked out and started scampering around the tent and scratching at the walls. Eventually, we managed to open the tent and let the little guy out, and he went off into the woods full of jerky and cookies. <laughs> Oh, my brother's friend was really embarrassed, and then he got mad because we sided with the raccoon. <laughs> I don't think they ever spoke again after that trip. Nah, we didn't miss him. Camping was a fun tradition for us, with or without company. Of course we'd do s'mores. It wasn't a camping trip without s'mores. Even when we'd be backpacking on longer trips, we still made a little space in our packs for graham crackers, chocolate, and marshmallows. <laughs> My perfect recipe is two toasted marshmallows, ever so slightly burned around the edges, with graham crackers and a peanut butter cup. But you've got to let the peanut butter cup sit on the cracker next to the fire and let it soften up a little bit. Mm, perfection. No, it's got to be ever so slightly burned, just for a second, so you get that slight crunch. <laughs> hey, to each their own. That's just how I like it. Everyone has a right to the s'more they prefer. What? I'm bleeding. Where? Oh. Yeah, that's not a big deal. I just got snagged on that barbed wire fence while we were running from that family of zombies. And then I made it worse while we were climbing up here. It's not so bad. Besides, it looks like you got worse than I did. No, really, it'll be okay. <sighs> okay, but only if you let me do the same for you. Hey, those are my terms. Okay. Yeah, it's just my hands and left arm. I kind of tried to rinse off the dirt earlier. I can pull my sleeve up, sure. Yeah, I'm ready. N no, you're good. <laughs> Just stings a little. Don't apologize, it's okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Well, I'll be more careful next time. <laughs> In that moment, my choice was barbed wire to the hands or being eaten alive. And I'd like to point out that you made the same decision I did. <sighs> I'm fine. Gosh, you're such a mother hen. 
No, I don't hate it. I don't need a bandage or anything. It's not very deep. Let's save the supplies. A little ointment will be just fine. Thank you. Your turn. Sleeve up so I can see your wrist. You ready? Here goes. <laughs> Sorry. More camping stories? Uh, okay. When I was growing up, we had one of those tents that was divided down the middle, so every noise Ollie and I made would wake our parents. We liked to chatter a lot, so we always got shushed from across the tent. One night, we were trying to drift off when I felt something moving underneath my sleeping bag, and I woke Ollie up and told him I was scared, and he told me to leave him alone and let him sleep. Sure enough, we got shushed. <laughs> so I lay there and stayed quiet, but I could still feel something moving around. After a little while, it stopped, and then Ollie sat bolt upright in his sleeping bag and said, I felt it too. We got shushed again. I said, but mom, dad, there's really something moving around. So my dad got up out of his sleeping bag and came over with the flashlight, looked around, but he didn't see anything. He got a little grumpy, told us to go back to sleep or else. Ollie and I squished over into the far corner of the tent, and every time we felt something moving, we'd try to quietly move somewhere else. Not a lot of space to go, so we were moving around frequently. My parents were so pissed at us, they didn't get any sleep that night. The next morning, we were all sleep-deprived and cranky, and of course, packing up the campsite had us even more on edge. So we mostly tried to stay out of the way. But then we went to take down the tent, and we found a massive rattlesnake skin right underneath our side of it. Yeah, it had shed its skin in the middle of the night, or at least finished the process. All I'll say is, Dad pulled over for ice cream on the way home. <laughs> Best apology ever. There you go. Should be scabbed over by morning. You're welcome. I'm in a bank of fire. You can go ahead and sleep. I'll take first watch. Well, yeah, I am exhausted, but so are you. And I always take first watch. You think we could get away with both of us sleeping through the night? Uh, you're right, I did say it was defensible. <laughs> How dare you use my own logic against me? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's both get some rest then. Gosh, it's still so cold out at night. Ugh. Yeah, I think it's colder tonight than it has been. It's clear though, that's probably why. <sighs> yeah, I'm good. <sighs> Just gotta get the sleeping bag warmed up so I'll stop shivering. <laughs> what? Are you sure? I'm an actual popsicle right now. I'll just make you colder. <laughs> okay, I, I won't say no to warmth. <laughs> oh my god, you're like a furnace. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> is this why you've been sleeping so well at night? Because you stay so warm? Oh, <laughs> well, you'll have to teach me how to generate body heat then. Or we could just do this again. You don't mind me being all up in your business like this? You like it. Oh. Well, <laughs> the feeling is mutual. 
go to sleep. You want me to sing? I mean, if it'll help you drift off, sure. It's only fair if you're keeping me this warm. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Close your eyes. Somewhere in the west, there's a place meant for me. Somewhere on the lone prairie. And I'll make my home where the buffalo roam. That's where I'll ever be. Give me a home on the prairie. Give me a home on the plain. Through sunshine or rain, to lose or to gain. Give me a home on the plain. I love the green valley, the long winding rills. I love to ride o'er the slow rolling hills. Give me a home on the prairie. Give me a home on the plain. With my loved ones so true, when my day's work is through. Give me a home on the plain. Sleep well. Ugh, this is miserable. No, let's not stop for the night just yet. There's a few hours of daylight left, and I want to put some distance between us and the river. When we were down in the riverbed earlier, I saw a lot of disturbances and tracks. I think there's more than one gang of undead running unchecked along the valley. I want to get past them, and ideally up this mountain. I know it's pretty slippery and muddy. I'm being careful. I'd bet dollars to donuts this rain and all of the melting snow is going to cause flood conditions. I don't want to be anywhere near the river when that happens. Maybe we'll get lucky and the flooding will take out a bunch of the undead, wash them all way downstream. <laughs> <sighs> no, nah, it's just a weird chill, that's all. I'll be okay. Another hour or so and we can curl up against a nice cozy tree trunk and attempt to rest. <laughs> uh, nothing. I'm just a little tired. I think I might have picked up a bug from someone at the trading post a couple of days ago. Unfortunately, in the days of zombies and undead, we still have to contend with the flu and the common cold. At least we've got some canned soup to share. That trading post was a miracle. I'm so glad we came across it. What kind of soup was it, anyway? Wasn't it chicken and rice? Mmm. That sounds so good. Oh, gosh, I love soup. I could eat soup every day of the year. Absolutely. It's warm, it's comforting, you can mix and match ingredients to have something entirely different every time. It's great to eat and fun to cook, not to mention it's very easy to make. The next time I get my hands on a little flour and some fresh onions, I'm going to make us a rabbit stew that will go down in history as the best stew ever, I promise. <laughs> hey, what's bothering you?
You've been really quiet today. Is it that infected guy we ran into this morning? Yeah. I've been trying not to think about it, too. I've been directing my mind towards literally anything else. Hey, there wasn't anything we could have done. He was already five days into infection, just a day or so away from turning. We kept him company, we told him stories, we gave him a last meal, and we honored his last wish. However upsetting it was. He had the chance to kinda go out on his own terms. And we gave him a decent burial. In this day and age, that's the best anyone can ask for. We did what we could, and it sucks that we couldn't do more, but we can grieve for him tonight. For now, we've got to keep moving. Something else is bothering you. What is it? You don't have to worry about me being sick. I'm fine. Okay, we'll take a break, but only for a few minutes. Yeah, I still have plenty of water from what we boiled yesterday. Thanks. I look flushed. <coughs> it's probably because of the exercise. I mean, we've been walking uphill all day. <coughs> yeah, sure, you can check me for a fever. But I'm fine. What? I can't be that feverish. Oh. I guess I am really tired. But I'm sure it'll be okay. It's probably just a little flu. We've got bigger things to deal with. Oh boy, here we go. Yes, I've caught a little bit of a cough. Of course my nose has been running, but we're out here in the freezing damp. That's not unusual. No difficulty breathing. Yes, I've been getting chills on and off for the last three hours. No, no pins and needles in my extremities, no spike in appetite, nothing like that virus. I have a splitting headache, though, and honestly, my whole body just hurts. Scale of 1 to 10? If 10 is feeling like I've been hit by a truck, then a 9. No, we don't need to do that. Those supplies are precious. We can't waste them. All right. I suppose that'll work. Pain relief and fever reducer in one. But just one tablet. Okay, two then. There. Thank you. I'm honestly not hungry. I don't think I could keep anything down anyway. But I'm fine for now. I just need rest. And we should find proper shelter first. A cave or some place with more stable ground to put up the tent. No, I'm good to walk. <laughs> Splitting up is a bad idea. We can find shelter together. It's just a little fever. I promise a little more walking isn't going to hurt me. How much worse could I get? I'll be just... Fine, fine. 
I'll sit here for one hour. One. And if you don't come back by then, I'm heading up that trail right behind you. Delirium be damned. Got it? <sighs> yeah, I am nervous. Listen, I haven't said anything because I thought I was just being paranoid, but I think we're being followed. Since this morning, as we were leaving the grave where we buried that guy, I just had this weird sensation that we were being watched. And it hasn't gone away. It might just be the sickness messing with me or something, but I don't know. Just watch your back, okay? Yeah, I'll be careful. If anything happens, I'll leave my backpack up there behind that fallen log. Easier to make a break for it if I'm not weighed down. Just don't leave me here too long, okay? Yes, of course my pistol is ready. Go on. The sooner you leave, the sooner you come back. Come on, sweetheart. This will go a lot better for you if you just tell the truth. I told you already I'm traveling alone, and I'm not infected. Look at you. Your face is flushed, and your eyes are shining bright with fever. Sure, no bite marks on you, it's true, but... You may have just ingested zombie blood, or eaten an animal that was infected. It's just a flu, I promise. Sorry, but I just don't buy it. And why don't you have any supplies with you? You can't possibly be crossing the mountains without supplies. I mean, come on. I lost them earlier. Zombie attack. I had to climb up a cliff and I couldn't take the extra weight. Huh. <laughs> now, let's see. Uh, why don't I believe you? You're sick, zombie attack, and no supplies. Ah. Well, looky here. Your friend has returned just in time to join us. They're not my friend. I don't know who they are. And yet, they came back for you. We ran into each other this morning and were headed in the same direction, so we traveled together a little while, but we don't know each other. Leave them out of this. <laughs> you're a terrible liar. Perhaps your companion will be better to talk to. Look, don't play innocent. I know you're traveling with her. I've been following the two of you for a while now. When I came across her alone in the clearing, looking like death warmed over, and with no supplies aside from that half-loaded pistol and a bottle of water, it was fairly obvious that you just left her for dead. So, it looks like maybe now you've grown a conscience? Oh, come on. I didn't do anything to her. Yet. But... She's turning. Surely you can see that. You're very much mistaken. She? She's turning into one of those abominations. Look, it might take a couple hours. It might take a few days. But it's happening. I can assure you of that. Common sense would dictate that I put her out of her misery right here and now. But I just happen to know some people. Some scientists that are all about finding the cure. Look... They study how the virus replicates, how it takes over an otherwise healthy body, and that is the key goal right there. Your friend will not have had to die for nothing, I assure you. You know, and it helps that uh, they pay handsomely for specimens, just like this one. I'm not infected. Selling me to some scientist isn't going to help anyone. Darling, you just tried to lie to my face. I can't trust a word you say. Now, you on the other hand... You truly believe she's just going around with the normal flu, don't you? <sighs> well, I suppose only time will tell. But if I'm right, I'm not willing to give up a perfectly good test subject. Someone like her in the early stages of infection, she's worth a fortune. Our little group would be, uh, set for provisions through the summer. And if I'm wrong? 
<laughs> well then, she can take her place as a worker in our camp. At that point, she'll owe us for nursing her back to health. Huh, you look strong and healthy. Why don't you come back to the camp and join us? We could use someone like you. Please get out of here. They will kill you. That's enough out of you, darling. Oh, no. Oh, hey there. I wouldn't go for that weapon if I were you. See, I've got some people out hiding in the trees out there. They've got their sights trained right on you. You'd be dead in half a second. And what would become of your little girlfriend then? All right. The way I see it, you have two choices. One, you leave here and never come back. Two, you turn over your weapons, you come with us, and you just work in the compound for a while. You know, the rest of your life. And if you set one foot out of line, we just see to it that you get bitten, and then we sell you to the highest bidding scientist as a lab rat. Ah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hey, the choice is yours. Please, go. <laughs> Good choice. Now say your goodbyes and get the hell out of here. Go on without me. I'll be fine. Once I've shown them that I'm not turning, then I'll be perfectly safe. What do you mean you'll come back for me? Whatever you're planning, don't risk it. It's not worth it. I couldn't live with myself if something happened to you because of me. God, you're stubborn. Be careful. Now, Missy, you're coming with me. I've either got a nice bounty to collect or a new worker to train. Either way, things are looking up. Well, at least for me. tell you about singing. It's not like I have anything else to do. I don't see why I'm still tied up here. I'm obviously not sick or turning into a zombie. The fever's been gone since yesterday. So what? So let me out of here. I'm not a danger to anyone. Of course not. But you're still valuable. <laughs> I meant to take you down the mountain earlier, but uh, like I told you yesterday, something happened to the truck and we had to make some repairs. Don't worry, though. Now that the engine's purring again, we're back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> Look, you seem like a relatively smart guy. You're running this whole operation, right? So there's something to be said for your intelligence. So why aren't you wrapping your head around the fact that I'm not infected? You can't sell me if I'm not... Is that... Zombie blood. A nice little cocktail of it. Just for you. Oh no. Don't worry, I collected it from freshly killed specimens just this morning. Thought it might help secure my investment. Might not have been lying about your sniffles, but we really need those provisions. Food, gasoline, medical supplies. The well-being of everyone under my care can be secured for the low, low price. <laughs> 
a one sick young woman. Well, you, sweetheart. Let go of me. All right. Stop squirming. No, you can't. I can and I will. <laughs> Who's going to stop me? <laughs> Who indeed? What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's you. Yeah, I'm okay. No, they didn't hurt me. I promise. They've just kept me locked up in here and tied up. I was fine up until... He was gonna... <laughs> I know. I'll be alright. You came back. <laughs> Come here. I'm so glad you're okay. <laughs> Yeah, the fever's gone. I'm a little weak. They haven't really fed me, but like I said, they haven't hurt me either. What's the plan? Yeah, I'm fine to make a break for it. Do we have enough time, though? What are you going to use as a distraction? Fire is a good idea. <laughs> I don't mind running fast, but I might have a better idea. He always jingled a little when he came in here to bring me water, so I suspect... I knew it. <laughs> he just said the truck was fixed. We can drive out of here. Leave them all behind in the dust. Where are you going to start the fire? The supply cabin's a good call. It'll draw everyone's attention away so they can deal with it. I can come with you. But... Okay, I'll get to the truck. No, I didn't get to see much of the camp. It was already dark out when they brought me here, and I've been in here with no windows ever since. It's been, what, two, three days? I think the truck is somewhere over there, though. At least that's my guess, based on all of the yelling and cussing I heard coming from that direction. It's parked out beside the road, then. Guarded, I assume. Figures. Oh well. If fire doesn't draw them away from their post, nothing will. If I have to smack someone upside the head, I'll do it. <sighs> yes, it's still me. I'm not condoning violence. I'd just be helping Karma along and forcing an unexpected nap. Yeah, and a minor head wound, probably. Small recompense for everyone getting out of this with their lives. Especially us. Yeah, they deserve a lot worse. But it won't be by my hand. And I hope it won't be by yours either. Besides, at least according to him, there are over four dozen people in this camp. The more of them we try to hurt, the worse our chances of escape get. I promise taking the truck is going to deal them a bigger blow than anything else. I've been listening to them talk about it. It's their entire livelihood. It's what enables them to make money off of selling infected people. If we take that, it puts their whole operation to a screeching halt. Besides, they said it had a full tank of gas. Apparently, fuel's one of the ways they get paid. On a full tank, we can not only get far away from them, but we can get all the way to Silverton. Him? We can tie him up so that when he wakes up, he can't follow us. No. He's an asshole, but he's not worth it. Hey, we kill him and we might start a blood feud. And we'll waste valuable time. 
we leave him here tied up and they'll assume that he just got his ass kicked by a tied up hostage who hasn't eaten in two days. Besides, with nothing else to do, I've been listening to whispers in camp. They question his leadership as it is, and this might just be what makes it all fall apart. And if we kill him, it makes us no better than him. We can be rid of him forever without doing more harm. Let's just get out of here and let him reap what he's sown. Please. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Get in. <laughs> we did it. So, where to? I've never been a getaway driver before. Okay, sure. Where do you stow our supplies? Cool. Give me directions. Once we get there, we'll collect everything, throw it in the truck, and you can drive for a while. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad the truck was fixed in time. What are you laughing about? <laughs> oh my god, you were the one who sabotaged the truck, weren't you? You did it so they couldn't haul me away unless they left on foot. <laughs> Here I was, thinking something happened to the truck during a salvage run. Turns out, you happened to the truck. <laughs> I hoped it was you. I had a feeling. <laughs> you saved my life. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, my eyes are on the road. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just full of adrenaline. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be able to rest right now. Let's just get our stuff and put some distance between us and that camp. Yeah, I'm full. <laughs> I ate plenty, I promise. No, I feel fine. Tired, shaken, but physically I'm just fine. Um, can we sleep in the truck tonight? Not, um, not to protect from zombies. I know, we put like 50 miles between us and that camp, but... I'd just feel better if we were both behind closable doors, with the ability to get out of here quickly. We both need a good night's sleep anyway. It would be safer. <laughs> what? It's just a few scratches, I'll be okay. All right. If you insist. Do your fussing. <sighs> What's troubling you? The community in Silverton. What about it? What do you mean? Like, if they don't accept us? Well, it's worth a try, right? We can offer up the truck. 
If a functioning vehicle doesn't work as a peace offering, I don't know what will. Even so, I'm not worried. Because if they don't have room for us, we'll just find somewhere else to go. We'll still have each other. And right now, that's the most important thing to me. All done? One over my eyebrow. Damn. I didn't even feel it. Yeah, go for it. What, the song I was singing back at the camp? <laughs> yeah, it is a good one. <sighs> ah. Yeah, it just stings a little. Keep going. Do what you've got to do. <laughs> hey, I can enjoy sea shanties as well as old country songs. No one says I'm allowed to only like one genre at a time. <laughs> You were relieved? What, when you heard me singing? <laughs> I was relieved when you came through that door. I went from feeling hopeless and terrified to knowing that everything was going to be okay. Well, doctor, am I in the clear? Honestly, thank you for patching me up. Why are you looking at me like that? You don't have anything to be sorry for. You came back for me. You saved my life. No, you made the right choice. The one I wanted you to make. If you recall, I was trying to lie through my teeth to get you out of there. Because I'd rather never see you again and know you lived than the alternative. I'd rather lie and pretend I never knew you than to see you hurt. <laughs> Just you try to stop me. I'd do it again. Only I'd be more convincing next time. <laughs> well, you did get me back. And for the time being, I'm not going anywhere. I promise. We make a good team, and I don't want to leave your side. Ever. As long as that's okay with you. I... Of course, you can tell me anything. Then... Kiss me. <sighs> oh, really? And how long have you been wanting to do that, exactly? <laughs> Normally, I'd say stop telling me what to do. But sleep sounds like a good order to follow. I hope you don't mind me asking, but... Can I borrow your internal furnace again tonight? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's get some rest. We've earned it. We should be there within another 15 minutes of driving. If I'm reading this right, and I'm pretty sure I am, we're only a few miles away. All topped up on gas? Good. 
We even have an extra canister to spare. Should help when we go to offer up the truck in exchange for a place in the community. No, I... I mean, I am prepared to hit the road again, if you want to. It's just that... Do you mind if we have one more night, just you and I? No, of course I want to go down there, I do. I... It's what we've been working towards all this time, right? But I don't know exactly how things will go. We'll have to put our trust in people we don't even know. I just want one more night where it's just the two of us. Just someone I know I can trust. This spot is safe and defensible, and besides, it's starting to get dark already. I know it might rain, but it's nothing we're not used to. And we can always snuggle up in the truck, right? Besides, we've got a bunch of foodstuffs that were loaded into the vehicle. Most of it we can offer up, but I can sort through it. See about cooking us something special for our last night together on the road. Please? Thank you. Yeah, I'll start choosing some ingredients if you want to get a fire going. What do you mean? Of course I want to spend time with you. Why is that surprising? Look, you've been my constant companion for a few months, but that doesn't mean I'm tired of you. Quite the opposite. Let's see. Uh, oh my god. There are fresh vegetables in here. I mean, they're a little wrinkled, like they've been in a root cellar, but... Not canned, not dried, not powdered. Real vegetables. Onions, potatoes, carrots. And there's flour. And oil and... Oh, paprika. <laughs> I did promise rabbit stew after all. Mind if I use what's left from our hunting earlier today? <laughs> awesome. Yeah, if you can put this over the fire and start heating it up, that would be great. Thanks. Nah, I always liked cooking. I had plenty of practice cooking over an open fire thanks to the many expeditions with my brother. For a while we stocked our camp kitchen with canned chili and mac and cheese, but we eventually got picky. Wanted to challenge ourselves a bit, you know? So we started trying to make our menu a little less dependent on pre-made meals. We'd bring fresh veggies, Pasta, rice, seasonings, stuff like that. We'd make foil packets full of things to roast in the coals, or something that could be made in one pot. Neither of us had any experience hunting, but we did supplement our meals with fish when we went somewhere that we could go fishing. Once, we even went digging for clams at the coast and made them with pasta. But usually we'd bring some kind of protein in the cooler. Oliver loved the culinary arts, so he could sometimes go a bit overboard, but I loved it. <laughs> there were a couple of disasters, yes, and we occasionally had to fall back on roasting hot dogs and eating dry cereal, but we learned from it. My favorite? Um, probably the trip we spent up at a mountain lake for three days. We had pan-fried trout and slow-roasted potatoes for dinner each day, and blueberry pancakes for breakfast. <laughs> Honestly, so good. Ollie made the best pancakes, hands down. Yeah, I do miss him. We were really close. I just don't stop and think about it too long. Everyone's lost someone at some point in all of this. And at least I didn't have to lose him to undead. I don't know if I would have had the strength to go through that. I've had time to grieve, but... I don't know. I think he'd want me to use my energy to stay alive. Yeah, I can tell you about him. I'd like that. Well, um, he was two years older than me. When we were very small, we didn't get along at all. We were constantly butting heads and tussling with each other. 
I think my parents gave up on us honestly because despite the consequences of our actions, we kept repeating the behavior. <laughs> but during first grade, there was this group of absolutely awful boys in my class who made it their business to bully everyone. At one point, they decided that I was their new favorite target. They'd been following me around all week, tugging on my braids, making fun of my Spider-Man t-shirt, calling me a nerd, whatever they could say to get under my skin. But at recess one day, they cornered me and it just got worse. I honestly don't recall what they said, but I remember hugging myself with tears running down my face, just wishing they would all disappear. And Ollie happened to be walking by with his friends. He marched over, wrapped an arm around my shoulders, and with his terrifying third grade authority, told them that if he ever caught them bothering me again, he'd make them eat dirt. <laughs> That's how I learned my brother was actually really popular at school. He took me to the cafeteria, gave me the cookie from his lunch, and walked me back to class when I stopped crying. He was waiting outside my classroom to escort me to our bus at the end of the day. You know, I can't say exactly what changed. Our parents were baffled, but from that moment on, he was my best friend. We bonded over our shared interest in superhero movies, we went for bike rides together, and, as I've told you, we spent a lot of time camping together. I'd go to his basketball games and cheer him on, he'd show up to my choir concerts, and the day he left for college, the only person that cried harder than me was him. <laughs> but he never would have admitted that. But at his insistence, I applied to the same school for a different program, so... We got plenty of time together once I graduated high school. After he got his degree, he got a job across town, so he was always nearby, looking out for me. He was uh, the reason the two of us made it out of the city alive, actually. Yeah, he was a nurse. He was working at the hospital when a patient came in with what we now know to be telltale symptoms. It wasn't the very first case overall, but it was the first in our city, and the virus hadn't made news yet. Ollie watched the patient devolve into an undead state and attack three others, who then quickly fell ill. When his shift was over, he came straight to my apartment on campus. He was still in his scrubs. I knew something was wrong right away. He looked really upset. He said something had happened at work, but he'd gotten a few days off and just wanted to go backpacking with me. He told me to pack warm clothes, which was a little odd given that it was summer, but I did what he said. When he picked me up the next morning, he had a bag full of cash and a bunch of groceries and a firearm. We had made it about three hours out of town when the alert came over the radio. The virus had blown up overnight. The city was being evacuated, but not quickly enough. People were dropping like flies. I later found out that they burned my entire apartment block in an effort to quell the undead. I don't know if my roommates made it out alive, but I certainly would have been trapped there with them if Ollie hadn't gotten me out. He knew something was off right away and got us out of there. It's not that he was trying to hide it. He didn't know the magnitude of what he'd witnessed, and he just had a gut feeling that we should get out. But how could he tell a bunch of people, especially strangers, about a patient episode and a gut feeling? He just did what he thought was right. He always did. And he was only 25 when that guy shot him. He would be turning 26 this week, actually. Yeah, that's right. A squabble over ammo. No, 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 it wasn't like that. <laughs> he was trying to break up two people who were fighting. He stepped in between them and... Yeah. And his last words to me were, Don't be scared. He was the one who was dying, and he used his last breath to comfort me. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. I'm glad to have a reason to talk about him. I miss him, but I'd rather remember him, even if it hurts. <laughs> of course. I'm happy to tell you about him. 
He would have loved you. Honestly. <sighs> there. Now we'll leave that to simmer for a while, add salt to taste, and boom. Rabbit stew. It's going to knock your socks off, I promise. Cheer me up a little. How? A surprise for me? <laughs> a CD? You found it in the glove box? What's on it? Ooh, somebody burned a playlist onto this thing. Classic. Of course that makes me happy. It's nostalgic. I miss the days before we had streaming services and shareable playlist links. Burning CDs for your friends, or your crushes, was a really fun way to show them how much you cared. <laughs> Simpler times. Yeah, the truck has a CD player. You think that's a good idea? Of course I want to. Listening to some music would be really fun, but I don't want to run the car battery down, and we have limited gas if we're talking about just letting it idle. You're right. A few minutes won't hurt. That's true. We are only a couple miles from Silverton at this point. We could still walk in. Besides, we've been through hell, so we deserve a little break, right? <laughs> and I thought you were supposed to be the practical one. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's pop it in, see what's on it. Wow. I hadn't really thought about how much I missed listening to music. Back then I'd have music on all the time. Driving around town, during my workouts, while I was doing homework or cleaning the house, always. I loved it. I definitely took that for granted. I took so many things for granted. No, I don't recognize the song. It's mellow, though. Pleasant. Maybe the truck's original owner wrote their own music. <laughs> oh no, I was not a musician. I can sing, and I did choir in high school, like I said, but instruments were beyond my capability. I gave piano an honest try, but it never really stuck. What about you? Hmm. Used to be that asking about someone's hobbies, like playing or listening to music, would be one of the first things you'd do when getting to know a person. Now it's just a brief assessment for whether that person will help or hinder survival. I miss learning the softer, more wholesome things about people. I miss seeing their faces light up when they spoke about something that just brought them joy. dance with you? In the middle of a forest? <laughs> well, alright. I'm not very good at it. Ollie tried to teach me how to dance, but it has been years since those lessons. That's true. You are the only person who will see. But... You're also the only person I'd want to impress. <laughs> of course. What do you mean, why? Isn't it obvious? Well, after our chat last night and the kiss, I suppose it's only fair to tell you. I've kind of been crushing on you since day one. Well, yeah, I pointed a gun at you. You broke into where I was living. 
I'd have been silly to let my guard down before I knew you meant no harm. But... I don't know. Once I realized you were hurt and you weren't a threat, all I wanted to do was help you. You seemed so genuine, and you trusted me. It took no effort at all to return that trust. And I mean, look at you. You're insanely attractive. Now, oh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm covered in travel dirt, too. I don't think I've had a hot shower in a year and a half. But even so, you're exactly my type. Even before the actual apocalypse started, if I had caught sight of you across a crowded room, I would have been instantly drawn to you. Whether or not I would have had the courage to talk to you is less certain, but I guess a global disaster has a weird way of bringing people together. And I'm glad it did. These last several weeks, taking shelter together, traveling on foot, looking out for each other, we've developed a bond, something really special. It's not just the life or death situations talking either. Even though it is a very rare person who would walk into a camp full of armed people to rescue someone they'd only known for a couple of months. Even outside of that very selfless act, I respect you. I've come to rely on you. You're more precious to me than any friend I've ever had. And when you confessed to me last night, something in me just lit up. Despite the hopelessness of the world around us, the danger lurking around every corner, the uncertainty that we live through every single day, I just know that with you, everything is going to be okay. So, yeah. Looking back on it, it's obvious I was falling for you the whole time. I just didn't realize it until you rescued me from that camp. And I didn't know how to say it until just now. <laughs> I'm not great with words, but I hope you know how much you mean to me. Whatever happens, I just want to be with you. There it is, the Silverton community. It's pretty similar to how I remember it. Aside from the wall, of course. <laughs> Everything's so green. I forgot how pretty it is here. I know we've been on this side of the mountains for a while, but it's easy to miss the scenery when you're avoiding undead, or getting captured, or rescuing someone who was captured. <laughs> Now we have a second to take it in, and it's nice. Nervous? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I don't quite know what to expect, but I'm sure it'll be alright. While this journey with you has been an adventure to remember, I'm ready to have some relative safety for both of us. But one step at a time. First, we have to convince them to let us in. I don't know how easy it'll be. Well, in any case, they see us. Let's see this through. Yeah, they do look like they're on the defensive. Maybe slow down a little. Oh geez, they're pointing weapons at us. Um. Uh, Put both your hands on top of the wheel. I'm going to raise mine. Just come to a stop and move slowly to put it in park, I guess. Step out of the truck now. Hands over your head. It'll be fine. Let's just do as she says. Keep your hands up. 
we're not here to cause any trouble. <laughs> yeah, like I'd believe that from one of Matthew's goons. Who's Matthew? Don't play stupid. We kicked him out for a reason. And now you come back down here with his truck? Last time he sent someone, two of our people were murdered. We're not letting that happen again. Wait, Matthew, guy about 6'2", blonde, mean as hell, has a thing for leather and an expression like he's constantly smelling shit. I was getting to that. But yeah, what they said. Likes to abduct people and try to sell them for science. Twisted son of a bitch if I ever met one. Hmm. Why do you have his truck? He took me from my partner by force. He deluded himself into thinking that the flu I was sick with was actually me turning into a zombie. He was going to sell me. He kept me locked up in a shed for a few days, and when it became obvious that I wasn't sick anymore and I was no longer profitable, he... He tried to inject me with zombie blood. Shit. And you escaped, obviously. Yeah. This one here saved my life. They arrived just in time and knocked him out before he could hurt me. They set the main supply cabin on fire and we used the distraction to make a break for it. We took this truck to put some distance between us and that asshole. And what did you do with Matthew? We left him tied up in the same shed where he kept me. <laughs> you should have ended his miserable existence when you had the chance. Perhaps, but I'm not him. We are nothing like him. And that means we don't kill people in cold blood even if they deserve it. <sighs> Stand down, everyone. I'm Cassie. I'm a member of the community council. So, why are y'all here exactly? We were hoping to ask for a place in the community. We thought we'd offer you this truck and the supplies in the back. The thought is appreciated, but we don't take bribes. What I mean is that if you give up the truck and the supplies, you give it freely, with no strings attached. An offer like that ain't gonna secure you a place here. So, if that's the exchange you were hoping to make, forget about it. Look, we're working on expanding the community, but we can't just take on everyone. While we do welcome all travelers on a temporary basis, not everyone can stay permanently. All able-bodied people must work and contribute, or else this safe haven of ours just won't last. I know that sounds harsh. If you think you're worthy of a spot here, then convince me. Why should we give it to you? What skills do you have? I was studying sustainable energy in college. I was a semester shy of getting my degree when everything went to hell, but I was doing an internship. I had the chance to learn a lot of practical applications for what I was studying, and I have a lot of ideas that I was originally going to use for a thesis, but I think would help you here. Plus, I can cook really well, and I know first aid. I'm also a pretty good shot. Okay, yeah, I can sing, too, but I don't think that's what they're looking for in a resident. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how far a little singing can go to lift people's spirits. And what about you? What can you offer? Well, I won't lie to y'all. Both of you have skills that we need. If you were telling the truth, you'd bring a lot to our community. But what's to stop you from leaving if you hear that some other place is safer or more appealing? It's not just safety we're seeking. We've heard about the work this community is doing to find a cure. We want to contribute however we can. It's not all about the security for us. It's about having a purpose outside of just surviving. For a long time, the only thing either of us have had to live for was ourselves. And now we have each other, but hope for humanity. That's something worth living for. And that's something worth dying for. We want to help. Let us prove it to you. One last question. Do you have a tent? Yeah. Alright. One month. 
The two of y'all will get a space to put your tent up out in the temporary accommodation area. You'll be on the farming crew and take a turn in the weekly rotations. That includes kitchen duty and cleanup crew. You do well there, fall in line and prove yourselves. Then we'll see about moving y'all into permanent housing and permanent jobs. Thank you so much. I could hug you. (laughs) Please, don't. Right. Get your things and follow me. Welcome to your new home. Uh, I'm exhausted. It's like, now that I don't have to be constantly looking over my shoulder, my whole being is demanding that I sleep. You too? Hmm. Did you get enough to eat? Yeah, I did. They really came through. There were so many fresh vegetables on the plate, I wasn't sure where to start. Tomatoes, cucumbers. Mm. I'm honestly so excited to help with the farming crew tomorrow. I'll gladly pull weeds or work in the greenhouse or do whatever. It seems like peaceful work next to what we've been doing. And Cassie told me she's going to have me help with some of the livestock, including the chickens. You know what that means? Eggs. Yeah. (laughs) Apparently they do scrambled eggs on Sundays and my mouth is watering already. I didn't realize before she told me that, but I really missed having a big traditional breakfast. (sighs) It's going to be weird, helping in the kitchen, cooking normal meals, eating them around a table with other people, having a sense of normalcy back. Don't worry. We will convince them that we're worthy of a place here. And just between us, even though Cassie did her spiel about them not taking bribes, I think the truck and the fact that we outsmarted Matthew will go a long way for us. We just have to follow through, and I'm sure we'll be alright. For now, though, what do you say we rest and enjoy being camped in a truly safe location? We can both sleep all night without having to wake up for every little noise. Yeah, we can cuddle. I'd really love that. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, that would be the smell of real shampoo. Getting to take a hot shower was the most luxurious thing I've experienced in ages. I never thought I'd get nostalgia from having a hot shower. You, uh, smell nice, too. (laughs) Hey, they bandaged up the cut on your arm. That's good. I don't think it's too much. It's been a while since you had a medical professional look you over. If they saw fit to use supplies on you, then they were probably worried about it getting infected. Did they say it would be fine now that they've treated it? (sighs) Well, that's a relief. Ah, well, that's probably my fault. I mentioned it to the doctor when I had my checkup. I said I was worried that it wasn't healing yet and that I'd feel better if they looked it over, even if it was about a week old. You would have done the same for me. And if you think I've survived actual apocalypse hell with you just to lose you to an infected cut, you've got another thing coming. Deal with the bandages and deal with my fussing, okay? (laughs) If the worst thing you've dealt with in the last several hours is getting medical attention because I was worried, then I'd say you've had a pretty good day. (laughs) Would you shut up and kiss me already? Yeah, I know I should sleep. But I'm just enjoying this feeling. Enough to eat, completely clean, and totally safe. Safe in these walls, safe in this tent. 
safe in your arms. Okay, I'll close my eyes. We made it. <laughs> we made it together. <laughs>